Alrighty guys, how the hell y'all doing now, eh? Just a big old Canadian, eh? Um, yep, been out here for like three hours bailing so far. No issues. Stopped two times to just kind of check on things and everything looks really good, so... And... Can you see the swath? Kinda, sorta, not really. Yeah, me too. Kinda, sorta, not really. She's pretty. She went from mediocre to actually quite nice to where the hell is it? We're pretty much just trying to keep the baler in between the combine where the comp when he was combining. Keep the baler in between the combine run the two tire tracks from when he trampled the straw and we're picking stuff up but my goodness it's tough to find that straw swath at times there's something right here in front of me which adds uh, like 12 30 in the morning uh, how long are we going to be out here for? I have no idea. We'll see what happens as time goes on. So, the baler's working good. It's bailing up nice. So, let's just keep on bailing, right? Anyway, time to kick her into higher gear. How fast are we bailing? On average, seven and a half miles an hour. But there's some bigger hills out here. Like even when I kick it down a gear, it still makes the old big blue freaking snort to crawl up some of these hills pulling the baler. So, and as soon as this bale is uh, saying let's tie off, I'll show you guys how many bale we've made so far. And yeah, there's lots of green coming in already. Do the backup, do the stop bolage. Bales, this button here, and push. We made 142 so far. So that's okay, 142 bales. I have no idea how much ground we've covered or how much is left in the field. I guess time will tell. Anyway, I'm gonna let you all go. And I might bring you back later on. Then again, I might just see y'all tomorrow. Whichever way, we'll talk to you later. Alrighty, guys. Well, how about that? Uh, we are finishing her up here now. If you can see the swath in front of me or not, I have no idea. But that's it. That's her. That's all she wrote. This field is done, baby. Yeah, woohoo! Done like dinner. And how many? Focus. How many bales? One seventy-seven. And the last bale is 50 inches. So now we just got uh, hit our wrap. That button right there. She's a buzzing. And it's tying. And I can drive because there's no swath to pick up. That's the last one. So this custom job is done. So like I said before, on this custom job, for every bale I make for Ken, I get one. And we'll hit the stop button. And we'll lift up our pickup so we're not dragging the sucker. So 
177 and a half bales basically on 155 acres. This straw was hailed out bad. I made the bales 66 inches. Now Ken did make a bunch of bales out here himself. How many for sure? I don't know. But there's a pile of bales that, to be honest, look like crap. Uh, there isn't one single bale out here that he made that doesn't look like crap. But anyway, That's one of them right there. Um, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. I get half of 177 bales. So, uh, 177, that's uh, 50. Uh, what the hell? I'm not very good at math without a calculator. How's that sound? Um, 35, so 50. I'm gonna get around basically 85 bales. No more than that. Just about 86, 87 bales, something like that. There's another one of his. Looky, looky. There's one of mine. Nice. So, anyway. And it's like freaking 2.30 in the morning. It's been a long day. Got up at, uh, what was it? 6, 6.30. Last night, we were in bed at 1, 1.30. Up at 6, 6.30. Went all day today. You guys were with me for most of it. Uh, with me and CP, actually. And here we are, 2.30 in the morning. This is done. By the time I get out of here, get home, it'll probably be like 3.30 in the morning. But tomorrow I can sleep in. I don't have to come and bail, right? And nobody phoned me to say they got something that needs to be fixed. So I can sleep a little bit longer. Hopefully our oats will be dried down enough that we can uh, combine the sucker. How's that sound? Anyway, that's enough chit chat. Let's get the hell on home. Get some shut eye. We'll catch you guys later. Alrighty guys, so uh, what are we doing? Well, we got the old Ford 700 that my buddy Ken is letting me borrow. We're out here in this oat field. We got the big old Massey 750 out here. And yep, it's go time. We did a quick test, quick sample test, ran it to the elevator, and it came back 13.8. So we're going to go get her done here uh, monkeyed around with getting that header hooked up this morning and checking things over and so on and so forth she was pretty much set up from before but uh, you know what it'll be what it'll be um, the oats is pushed down into the ground it stuck a little bit to the ground from when we cut it because the ground was still wet. And I'm having trouble picking that stuff up down there. But maybe as I get more used to running this machine, I'll get braver and put it down lower. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyways, for now, she's a go time. And so... Uh, we're gonna, yeah, 13 8, so they said rock and roll. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna let you go. We'll fire this big bad boy up and we'll bring you back once we get in the seat and kind of get comfortable with them again. Talk to you later. Alrighty, guys, it's kind of noisy in here, so I don't know how much videoing I'm gonna be doing, but uh, 
picking it up. If I can keep it from driving the pickup at her into the freaking combine, that'll be good. I don't really got much for rocks, so well, I got rocks, but uh, uh, we land rolled all of this land because of the sod lumps and the few stones that never got picked. So I did plug the combine once already. Um, but that was my own darn fault for trying to pick up a, ch a bunch of uh, thistle. But I just plugged up the header down there. Yeah. So this is okay. Yeah, and we're going to be taking that stuff down, that oats down here pretty quick, I'm thinking, too. But she's leaving a nice friggin' straw swath for me to bail up, that's for sure. Can't complain too much with that stuff. And as lots of you will know, I ain't much of a combine operator type of guy, so this is a whole brand new learning curve for me. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. We'll talk to you all later. Our first hopper load going in. It's not a full hopper, but I'd never make another round, so I figured screw it. I'll just dump right now. I imagine this truck will hold about 350 bushels for a truck load. So we'll just have to wait and see how many bushels we end up with, right? But there she is. First hopper load going in the bin. Woohoo! Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. We'll bring you all back later. Alrighty guys, well we're still going. Have to tighten up the drive belt for the pickup. Uh, it's old belt and kind of stretched out so but anyway we've got that fixed and look who came for a ride if any of you guys have ever been in a 750 Massey and I don't know what the 850s are like that South Sass Farmer has but she's managed to squeeze in here she's uh, it's a tight fit for her she's sitting on a 5 gallon bucket and it's kind of in the way for the clutch for when I need to stop, but for now she's in here and she can't get away from me now. I could really bug you. <laughs> but basically I'm just doing a round. I do a round, I dump, I do a round, I dump. So we made two dumps so far. It's not right full hoppers, but I wouldn't be able to do two rounds on this little roughly 20 acre plot so anyway we're just gonna keep on chugging here with the old Massey 750 the grain is coming in there believe it or not the windows are kind of seized up almost too much dirt in the track and stuff so I can't stick my hand out the window to show you what it looks like but it is in, coming in so, but it's light. There ain't a hell of a lot here. I hope we fill the truck. How's that sound? At this point, I was hoping for 600 bushels, but now I just hope to fill the truck. A while back, I was hoping to get 60, 70 bushel an acre, but that ain't going to happen. So... Anyways, we'll talk to y'all later. Here we go, guys.
talk, but you probably won't even hear me. It's so loud. if he could run me over. Got a few shots, that's all right. And that's all right. But unfortunately for me, and nothing against my beautiful wife CP, Um, when we're combining it's a one man show because there she goes she don't drive a standard she don't do well with standard trucks so I do it all by myself. Unless I can get somebody in to drive truck or drive the combine. Maybe in time as things get going more, maybe I could get CP in the combine. She'd probably be a really good combine operator because most women are a lot more careful than most guys. Probably should have sent CP to Straight Pipe Bakers. She probably went to buggered up Dom. Her and Dom probably would have got along really good. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on trucking here with uh, combining stuff, and uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Alrighty, guys. Wow, what the hell? Why am I? Why is it shut off? Why is it in the field? Why did I do three round, three and a half, three and three quarter rounds? And why is that lid open on the engine compartment? Because it died on me again the son of a gun I talked to Lloyd uh, and yeah we're gonna go back to this goddamn fuel tank we're gonna have to get in here clean this up and get in there and pull this uh, suction line out again and check to make sure that we didn't suck some stuff up all around that that uh, line up there again and unfortunately now we're out in the field where it's windy and dusty and I can't get it start to get it to the yard. Uh, so we got to do it out here. Oh, crapper. I believe the combine's actually a good combine. I think it's mechanically sound outside of this 
fuel tank issue. I believe is all that's wrong is this fuel tank issue. But anyways, I'm just waiting for CP because basically all of my tools are in the friggin' blue tractor, big blue, and he's friggin' eight, ten miles away in the neighbor's field where we were bailing last night. Uh, so, anyway, we'll talk to y'all later. Alrighty, guys, well, obviously we're up and running again. Uh, I took that fuel line, that suction line out of the tank, and we had some acetone, so we poured acetone backwards through the line, and lo and behold, chunks of shit started coming out of the line into the filter that's on the bottom end of that line. If you go back in our videos, you might have remembered seeing that filter. But anyway, um, then we poked a little tiny hole in the bottom end of the filter. It's a wire mesh filter. And got that shit out of there. And now she seems to be running pretty good we're clipping along here at four mile an hour in this O's so minor hiccup but I'll take the minor hiccup oh let's get back on track here So hopefully she'll stay running for me now to finish this off. And if you look out there, there's Tristan. He was at work all week down in Weyburn and he came for a quick little visit just to see how things are going. And now he's leaving. He rode in the combine here with me from that end, that's where I broke down by his truck, to the north end of the field, and then I told him we'll just bring the grain truck over here by his truck so he's not walking. He's got to go home to his girlfriend and his puppy dog, he hasn't seen him all week. here trying to video for you guys and run this noisy combine and it is pretty noisy in this friggin cab let me tell you I'm almost tempted to get a set of earplugs or something so but there's the grain she's hoppered up there now nice. Hopefully we'll get a truckload and that'll be good I guess. That's all it'll be so. Anyway I'll let you guys go and we'll yammer later. I'll say one thing for sure. She sure is leaving some really nice straw. Like yeah it's definitely leaving some nice straw out there. That's for darn sure might only be like friggin 20 acres but there's gonna be a few bales on these little few little 20 acres right we have to leave a few strips uncombined for hail insurance because they won't be here for a couple weeks yet the little buggers so but whatever anyway we'll yammer at y'all later What's wrong, babe? Yeah, I kind of had that truck a little over full. She was leaking all the fucking way home. It was full. But here we are. Harvest 2021. With the Ford 700 and an MF 750 and 
some 19 god knows what six inch by 35 auger it's old school but it's our school we'll catch you guys later alrighty guys well we got Just a smoking. But, well, we got one truckload in, and I talked to Ken. He's the owner of the truck. And he said I probably had around 420 bushels in there, real close to it. So, that's 420 bushels we never had before. And we're just working at bringing in basically this one, that little tiny one right there, and the next one to it right there. So basically like a hopper full is all that's left here. And I put about 50 bushels in the truck because I couldn't get it all in from the last Last time I dumped, I had that truck heap right friggin' full. It was spilling out the sides. Probably shouldn't have done that, but whatever. What's done is done, and I probably lost a bushel, two bushels on the road. Anyways, let's get this stuff done, and uh, we'll bring you back another time. Until then, give us the old thumbs up. Comment, subscribe, tell your friends and neighbors to come on board. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe BCB will start custom combining with an old 750 Massey. Ho <laughs> ho! Wouldn't you like to see that kind of shit happen, right? Anyway, we'll let you all go. We'll catch you guys later. Holy cow, look at that. Two of the lights actually even work on this thing. And uh, there, we're unloading the last of her right now. Won't be much, about 30, 30 bushel maybe, 25, 30. So, that's her guys. For me, Harvest 2021 is now done. Just like that, one day. One day today and one day on the barley, basically, right? So... Now it's just to clean up the combine, get it tucked away, blah, blah, blah. But that'll take, that'll be a while down the road before I get that actually put away. Because I need to clean out my shop really good. So that I can get it in there. Anyway, you all have a good night. We'll talk to you later.